a custom personality chip PCB that I have designed. The fingers are a little long, not really a big deal, but I'm going to do another version with shorter fingers and preferably gold plated so they're just a little more durable. But it does surface mount memory chips or through hole memory chips, whichever one is more convenient. So here's the surface mount version. Here is the through hole version, which I've added a socket to so I could easily remove this chip and reprogram it as I want. So now it comes down to how is the audio on the personality chip organized and figuring all that out before I can start really making actual personality chips. So here's what I know so far, which is when I press this button, the sound button on the controller, it's going to play audio from one of the first seven groups of audio on this chip. Personality chips have groups of audio, have 12 groups of audio. The first seven chip uh, groups, uh, one of those audio clips and one of those first seven groups will be selected at random and played when I press this button like so. Yes, thank you, BB-8. Um, the other five groups, uh, those are audio for uh, R2 accessories and a couple of very specific instances, like when uh, your droid is activated for the very first time. Uh, so it's not something to worry about. Or it's just those that first seven groups. Those first seven groups, that's what we care about. Um, so that's how you get your personality. So if you're in a first order area, the group that's designated for first order noises will play. So your, your R2 or BB unit will, if it's a first order friendly chip, it'll have friendly noises. If it's a a personality chip that should uh, be afraid or not like first order, it, the, then the emotion of those audio clips should be different, should be frightened or angry or something like that. Um, but figuring out how all of that is organized is what I'm working on now. So... Boop, 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 beep, beep, beep. Hey, I'm thirsty. There's the... Boop. Yes, thank you. That's the custom chip in there, showing you that it works. Um, but how can you how can you map out what uh, group belongs to what emotion or whatever? Well, you can emulate Bluetooth beacons. Here is an older phone that I have. It's got an app on it called NRF Connect, which is free that anybody can use. And you can see I've got a uh, hex uh, a company identifier of 0183 and I've got this big long string of characters for the Bluetooth beacon that is encountered in Doc on Dars. And so if I turn that on so yeah sure leave the junk personality chip turn it on So there you go. So there's the uh, the droid reacting to a Bluetooth beacon. Now, because I made this first personality chip with absolutely no idea of how the groups were organized, uh, I'm not going to get any clue as to what emotion uh, the droid should have. But if I, uh, I plug in an actual personality chip... See, that's, uh, so there's an actual personality chip in there. The problem now, though, is when I turn this on, it's going to take, like, uh, a minute or two for this thing to react again to that same beacon, so I'll just put that off to the side and talk, because I encountered a problem. Uh, oh. Oh, very nice. Responded very quickly. It broke. While I was trying to start, while I was starting to map out the audio groups, this thing broke. What would happen is, as soon as I activated one of those Bluetooth beacons, it would go into shutdown mode. 
and uh, that's not a good thing. Did I break it with my custom personality chip? I don't know. So I opened it up, and long story short-ish, here's a here's the main PCB inside the BB unit. Uh, this is the front. This is the back. Uh, this is the main microcontroller that runs the show. Here's your Bluetooth antenna. This microcontroller. This is a Nordic Semiconductor 51822. Very common chip. This does Bluetooth communication, so the remote controller it receives the signals from the remote control and sends them off to where they need to go. The motor connectors are here to make the motors turn, and through these three vias here and a couple other hidden under here, they come down to this side and go into this, which is the audio microcontroller that connects to this socket here which goes up to where the personality chip is read. So this encounters a beacon. It starts making the uh, unit, the BB unit, move and also tells the audio controller, hey, play sound four from group three or whatever, or play a random sound from group two or whatever. This Bluetooth chip, or this, this microcontroller, this Nordic Semi 51822, has had a short inside of it. Uh, a bunch of troubleshooting wound up breaking this chip over here. I've got replacements coming. <laughs> but uh, I wound up taking this little sub-PCB off and found that this chip had a short in it. And... There's not much you can do for that. Uh, there's no there's no fixing that. You have to replace the chip. And so, because I had no idea what I was doing, I ordered a couple of these Bluetooth beacons. They're just little, little again, like sub-PCBs meant to go on a bigger PCB, but they've got the same Nordic Semi chip on it. And they've even got a little Bluetooth antenna and stuff. And I could program these to act as little Bluetooth beacons. So I figured, hey, if I was able to fix this, then uh, maybe I'd have a couple of Bluetooth beacons I can use to play around with the droid later. So that's uh, what happened. I, and, and I, I'll spare you the details, but it was an adventure. I was able to remove the programming off of this chip while it was still working. And put it onto a new chip. So here's the... There's the Bluetooth beacon where I took the chip off of it, and I replaced it with this. With, I replaced this chip with the one I took off of the Bluetooth beacon, reprogrammed it using the programming that I took off of the old chip, and somehow it worked. And again, the, that whole process of pulling that off took a couple of weeks and was very interesting because this chip has a feature that should prevent me from being able to do that. But it also has a weakness that lets you bypass the protection to read the data off of the chip. So writing a couple of programs to exploit that weakness and getting that programming, that was that was an interesting thing. Uh, I'll spare you the details on how this board works. The point being that I now have a working BB unit again. It just can't move in all directions because, again, only one motor works. The motor driver chip for the other motor needs to arrive and that's going to be a couple more weeks. So let me uh, demonstrate something. Okay. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to sleep quite yet. Let me showcase one thing about the beacons here. So there is the manufacturer ID at 183 always the same thing. Again, this is the NRF Connect app. This is an Android phone, but there is an iPhone version as well. You should be able to use if you have one of those. Uh, it's a free app. Um, there's a lot of numbers there. If we go to this number here, 0A040 and then a number. That number tells the droid from which group to play audio from. 
So it's a one here, so it's only going to play audio from group one. And it will go all the way up to group seven. If you put an eight or nine or ten in there, a ten would be the letter A. Uh, this won't respond. The, the droid won't respond. So, for example, if I make this a seven, hit OK. It's no longer docs. It is first order. Now when I hit this, in theory, the sound that this thing makes, because this is the stock BB uh, sounds, I believe it will be scared or sad or something like that. Let's find out. Turning it on now. <laughs> And yeah, you kind of get that emotion. That's a little cautious, a little afraid, maybe. And then you could change it to something else. Well, actually, in this case, instead of just like instead of making changes, I'll just hit clone. Open up the clone, and we can change this to something else. Let's make it say resistance. Do I spell it right? It looks like I did. Oh. Nope, go back in there. We have to change this. The resistance, I believe, is from group three. So I've changed that seven to a three. And you can see how this is going to work. This droid one, this is the Bluetooth beacon that the droid emits. And... I can tell here if it's a if it ends in O one, then you have a um, what do you have an R two unit that's that has no chip in it. An O two is a BB unit that has no chip in it. An O three is a blue personality chip, and then the numbers keep going up, so on and so forth. Do they react to it? I don't know. Maybe not. It also might be a little early, because again, the droids will only react every couple of minutes. It's, I think it's like one and a half to two and a half minutes, and, and how long it takes before its next reaction is slightly random, at least from my limited testing. Again, up until a day ago, this thing was not working, so I haven't had an opportunity to test this in the last, geez, three weeks? No, it's not reacting. So if I bring up the resistance beacon, maybe that's more of a, a happy noise. Again, this, how you interpret the emotion of a bunch of beeps uh, could be um, open to interpretation. <laughs> it's subjective, but that's the idea. Um, so I'm working on... I want to try and make a personality chip. One that sounds like a droid, not something that's audio clips from insert famous TV or movie character that you want your audio, your, your droid to sound like. And that's an interesting avenue on its own because, again, I've had a couple of weeks here with no droids to play with. But I did discover... Jeez, oh so I hooked this up short. I did discover that you can buy keyboards that don't actually make noise. They're just just for uh, MIDI interfaces to your computer. And then if you have a computer program that will play MIDI instruments... Oh, let me hook this up. Hang on a sec. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you're going to hear it, but we can do make noises now. Which is kind of cool. So armed with this and some software, you know, I have an opportunity here now to make a droid or two, uh, personality chips, I mean. So that's what I'm working on right now, something that I can share with others. Let's, let's use that word for now. Let's say share. I can put on a custom personality chip and share with others. That's where things are at, and if you are interested in 
me going over how everything works, which would be a very long, very boring video for most people, let me know, and I will, because I have spent two weeks staring at this thing, poking it and prodding it with a multimeter, to the point that I feel pretty confident in my understanding of how everything works, except for this potentiometer. I don't know what that thing does, and I'm not going to touch it. All I know is it connects to, uh, I believe it's these two pins right here that go directly to the chip. There's nothing in between here. This isn't an audio thing, uh, because if, 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 this, if this dealt with the audio, it would plug into this, but it doesn't. You can actually see here are the three pins for that potentiometer, and one goes to ground. One isn't connected to anything on this side, and this one only goes to a test pad. So the only the only wires to it, the only connections to it, are, are these two pins right here. Pfft, who knows? The R2 units don't have this. Why do only the BB units have this? And what does it do? I don't know. And I, I, I am a little worried right now to try that out because of all the hassle I've gone through replacing this chip. I don't want to break it anymore. But anyways, if you want to a more thorough review of what all this junk does. Let me know. I'll make a long, boring video about that. So for now, that's about it. That's where things are. The personality chips are coming along.